be in order. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by the representative from Colorado, Ms. Bober. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Gentlemen's recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, there is an undeniable crisis along our southern border, and the most recent numbers we have received are alarming. Last month, there were over 100,000 illegal immigrants encountered at our border. That's a 173% increase from the same time last year, and the highest number of encounters in seven years. From January to February of this year, we saw a 163% increase of family unit encounters, a 61% increase in unaccompanied minors, and a 28% increase in encounters overall. This surge is a direct result of the Biden administration's failure to secure our border and enforce our immigration laws. Now we face a humanitarian crisis while the president refuses to acknowledge this dire situation. My Democrat colleagues are turning a deaf ear by advancing two bills this week to grant blanket amnesty to millions of illegals. Are you kidding me? This sends the wrong message that our borders are open and our laws don't matter, which will only incentivize more illegal immigration. It's time to build a wall and end policies like catch and release and oppose mass so amnesty. Expired. We must secure our border. Thank you, and I yield back. Mr. Speaker, pursuant to House Resolution 233, I call up H.R. 6, the American Dream and Promise Act of 2021, and ask for its immediate consideration. The bill, as amended, shall be debatable for one hour, equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on the Judiciary or their respective designees. The gentleman from New York, Mr. Nadler, and the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Jordan, will each control 30 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from New York, Mr. Nadler. Mr. Speaker, H.R. 6, the American Dream and Promise Act of 2021, is vital legislation that establishes a path to lawful permanent resident or LPR status for two critically important populations that are in dire need of protection. The DREAM Act creates an earned path to LPR status for dreamers, individuals who entered the United States in their youth and who have lived here for most of their lives. Dreamers are part of the fabric of our nation, aptly demonstrated by their commitment to bettering our strength through the pursuit of education, military service, and employment. It is undeniable that dreamers enrich our nation. They are our neighbors and coworkers, they are classmates with our children, and they serve our military with distinction. They are an essential part of our communities, where they contribute to our thriving economy and make America a stronger, more united, and more diverse nation. Similarly, the Promise Act provides a path to LPR status for individuals who either held or were temporary or were eligible for temporary protected status, TPS, as of January 1, 2017, or deferred income departure, DED as of January 20th, 2021. TPS is a form of humanitarian relief provided to individuals from countries experiencing dangerous conditions and crises. DED is like TPS, but it is derived solely from the President's constitutional powers to conduct foreign relations. Like DREAMers, TPS and DED recipients are essential to our communities. Many of them have lived in the United States for decades. They make up a significant portion of the workforce in key industries, including construction, food service, and home health care. They contribute to the U.S. economy not only through their work, but also through consumer spending and tax revenue, and they have been particularly essential in serving our country during the COVID-19 pandemic. I have no doubt that some of my Republican colleagues will stand before us today and use what they claim is a crisis at the border as an excuse not to support this bill. But let's get one thing straight. This legislation is not about the border. This legislation is about finally delivering on our promise to America's dreamers and others who are equally deserving of our protection. I want to thank my colleagues Lucille Roybal Allard, Nydia Velasquez, and Yvette Clark for their commitment to this important legislation and to the millions of people this legislation will protect. I hope that all my colleagues will stand up for them when it truly counts and will support H.R. 6 today. I reserve the balance of my time. Mr. Speaker, there's a crisis at the border. There's been a crisis at the border for weeks. And instead of addressing the crisis, instead of having a hearing in the committee, Democrats have passed bills that defund the police, restrict American Second Amendment liberties, and federalize election law. And not one of those bills, by the way, not one of those bills went through committee. In fact, the Judiciary Committee 
74 days of this Congress, the full Judiciary Committee is yet to have a hearing on anything. We've asked to have a hearing on the border crisis, the real crisis. We've asked to have a hearing on cancel culture, the attack on people's First Amendment liberties. We've asked to have a hearing on conservatorships. No full committee hearing this entire Congress, but they can pass bills to defund the police, restrict American Second Amendment liberties, federalize election law. And now, while there's a crisis on the border, they bring a bill to the floor that gives amnesty to three million illegal, uh, illegal aliens. 74 days of the 117th Congress, the Democrats have taken away the Republicans' right to offer a motion to recommit. They've kicked Marjorie Taylor Greene off the committee. Two Democrats wrote a letter trying to cancel Fox News, Newsmax, One American News. The Democratic chair of the House Administration Committee compiled a dossier on 140 Republican members, and they're preparing to steal an election from Republican Congresswoman Miller Meeks. And today, today they're going to pass a bill, try to pass a bill, which, as I said before, gives amnesty to three million illegal immigrants. We've got gang members crossing the border. We've got people whose name is on the terrorist watch list crossing the border. We've got COVID positive illegals crossing the border. 100,000 encounters with foreigners on the border in February alone. Housing illegal immigrants in the Dallas Convention Center. And the administration sending FEMA in to help even though they refuse to call the crisis a crisis. They're sending in the disaster agency to help with the situation. If that's not a crisis, Frankly, I don't, know, I don't know what one is. A crisis that President Trump two months ago told us was coming. I want to read what President Trump said in January. Two months ago, this is what President Trump said. If our border security measures are reversed, it will trigger a tidal wave of illegal immigration, a wave like you've never seen before. Boy, was that accurate. If our border security measures are reversed, what has the Biden administration done? They placed a more on deportation. They ended the Remain in Mexico program and they've stopped building the wall. I think that's a reversal. I think that's a reversal of the measures that were put in place. And what did it trigger? A tidal wave of illegal immigration, a wave like you've never seen before? It sure did. The tidal wave is here and the Democrats' answer is amnesty. Wow. Such a deal for the American people. Such a deal for the American taxpayer. Democrats answer, defund the police, attack Second Amendment liberties of Americans, federalize election law, try to cancel Fox, Newsmax, One American News, compile a dossier on Republicans, kick one congresswoman off of her committees and try to take an election from another, all while they are creating a crisis on the border and then respond to it all with what? A bill that gives amnesty to three million, three million illegal immigrants. That's what this legislation does today. I hope we vote no. I hope we can stop this legislation. This is not what the American people bargained for. This is not common sense. And I hope we defeat this, this measure. I reserve the balance of our time. The Dream and Promise Act has the support of Democrats, Republicans, and independents, as well as businesses, organized labor, faith groups, educators, health professionals, former cabinet officials, and the majority of the American public. Mr. Speaker, last year we finally achieved operational control of our southern border for the first time in decades. The Trump administration made it clear that our border would be enforced and illegal immigration dropped dramatically. Well, that all ended on January 20th when Joe Biden issued executive orders to stop deporting illegal immigrants, abandon the border wall, and to admit anyone claiming to be under 18 and rescinding the Remain in Mexico policy for asylum claims. Well, that message has been heard loud and clear. The Border Patrol reported more than 100,000 encounters in February alone. Now think about that. That is the entire population of South Bend, Indiana, or Green Bay, Wisconsin, in a single month. And it's getting worse. We're way beyond the debate over whether this is a border crisis. The question now is whether we have a border at all. What's the Democrats' response? Well, this bill promises a path to citizenship, not only for 700,000 DACA recipients, but millions more who illegally arrived prior to January 1st, were under 19 when they arrived, and have only committed two misdemeanors. How do you prove you qualify? Under this bill, you have a friend vouch for you. Now, we all sympathize with those illegally brought here as young children years ago. 
and more than 200 Republicans supported legislation to give them legal status in the 115th Congress. But it included measures that secured our border and enforced our laws to discourage another generation of young people being brought here, exactly as we're seeing unfold today. Why are so many children being placed in the hands of Mexican criminal cartels and forced to suffer the 2,000-mile trail of terror to our border? Because it works. This bill proves the Mexican crime cartels are right, you'll be admitted into our country, and need only wait for the next amnesty. I yield back. Mr. Speaker, imagine this. You are 17 years old, you've worked hard, you're the valedictorian of your high school class, uh, you're the, the uh, uh, quarterback on the football team, you go down to apply for your driver's license and you find out for the first time that you were actually not born in the United States, that you're undocumented. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As we see the ongoing impacts of Biden's inhumane border crisis, I rise in opposition of H.R. 6. It is irresponsible to be considering this bill today. This bill provides amnesty to millions of those who are illegally in this country. This promise of amnesty is a magnet for aliens attempting to enter the United States today. And for at least 35 years, we've seen a direct correlation between promises of amnesty and an increase in illegal border crossing. The ongoing Biden inhumane border crisis is a direct result of then-candidate and now-President Biden's flawed border policies, including amnesty. That's why I, re I reintroduced the Fund and Complete the Border Wall Act earlier this year and introduced the Stopping Border Sur Surges Act earlier this week. These bills include real reforms that will have real impacts, specifically the Stopping Border Surges Act fixes problems caused by the Florida Settlement Agreement that prevents DHS from detaining family units for more than 20 days ensures that unaccompanied alien children are quickly and safely returned to their homes and promotes increased integrity in the asylum system. But H.R. 6 will cause more problems than it will solve. It has serious flaws that lead to fraud and abuse. This bill gives the Secretary broad authority to waive grounds of inadmissibility for humanitarian purposes, family unity, or because the waiver is otherwise in the public interest. That means that under this bill, even convicted criminals will be eligible for amnesty. And if that's not bad enough, under this bill, aliens who were removed from the country by DHS will be allowed to return and get amnesty. Let me repeat that. Aliens who were ordered removed by an immigration judge after receiving due process will act and were actually removed will be allowed to return and get amnesty. Last year, USCIS, the agency who administers this amnesty program, almost had to furlough 70 percent of its workforce because the fees it collects do not cover the cost of adjudicating immigration benefits. But this bill actually sets the amnesty fee arbitrarily low and will allow most aliens to obtain a fee waiver. That's a recipe for disaster. This bill prohibits information from being shared with ICE so that Im our immigration laws cannot be enforced. Instead of prohibiting information sharing, we should require information sharing. And this bill does nothing to secure the border or close loopholes in our immigration laws that encourage illegal immigration. Fired. I oppose this bill and encourage my colleagues to do the same. These dreamers, TPS and DED holders, have lived in the shadows for too long, doing our nation's essential work while living a life of uncertainty and fear every day. You know, night, a couple nights ago, I was in Laredo, Texas, uh, doing an interview, sitting overlooking the Rio Grande, and my interview was interrupted by a stream of uh, human struggle, uh, smugglers and people shouting, run for the ladders, run for the fences. From coming from the water, and then some went back across the river, went over to a facility where children are being housed right now. They are the people being smuggled by cartels for profit. That's happening right now today. While we sit in here and debate this bill, it is happening right now. A child is being abused right now by cartels. And this body, the quote unquote People's House, is doing nothing. Nothing to address cartels who have ownership of our borders right now. We are not doing our job. A secure border is pro-immigrant. But instead what we're doing today is we're going to pass legislation which is a magnet for more traffic of children. We're going to pass legislation today that empowers cartels. We're going to pass legislation today which is a band-aid on a broken system because this body refuses to do its constitutional duty to secure the borders of the United States. 
That is what we're going to do today. Meanwhile, nothing is going to improve the lives of the little girl sitting in Nuevo Laredo right now under the hands of CDN being abused for $3,000, for $7,000 to move that little girl across the river, while Border Patrol doesn't have the resources to secure the border. When I'm down on the river with a guy who's on a three-mile stretch of the border, one guy, and he can do nothing about that flow while narcotics and fentanyl comes across our border. So pat ourselves on the back today, Mr. Speaker, for a bill that's going to get passed, headlines, speeches given about, all oh, this is so great for immigrants. Meanwhile, immigrants today getting raped, abused, beaten, sold into indentured slavery, put into human sex trafficking because we refuse to secure the border of the United States. And we'll never get a chance to offer an amendment on the floor of this body to do anything about it. I yield back. These bills are not comprehensive immigration reform, but they are supported by the American people because they know that DREAMers, TPS, DED, uh, are adding to this country's value. Mr. Speaker, for 135 years, America's bright beacon to the world has been that statute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I would just point out, uh, Mr. Speaker, the majority leader, uh, it's just not, this is not accurate what he said. Republicans two years ago had bills that were much more comprehensive than what the Democrats are bringing to the floor this week. We had a, we had a bill that dealt with merit-based uh, immigration, E-Verify, Ag Workers Enforcement, Border Security. So it's just not accurate to say our, our plan wasn't comprehensive. We had two bills, as, as the Republican leader uh, mentioned. So with that, I would yield uh, one minute to the Republican leader, the gentleman from California, Mr. McCarthy. Mr. Speaker, I am going to say something that President Biden refuses to say. There is a crisis on our southern border. It's a humanitarian crisis. It's a public health crisis, a national security crisis. It is a Biden border crisis, and it is spiraling out of control with no signs of ending. When candidate Biden told migrants in June, immediately surge to the border, I knew his immigration policies would be bad. But I did not think it would be this bad. I did not think that would mean 13,000 unaccompanied minors in the U.S. custody. I did not think it would mean moving them from border facilities across the country, 1,000 of them to Midland, Texas, 3,000 to Dallas, and likely to more cities tomorrow. I didn't think the Biden administration would require COVID tests for American citizens entering the country, but not to illegal immigrants. I did not think Biden's own DHS secretary would have to admit that we are, and I quote, on pace to encounter more individuals on the southwest border than we have in the last 20 years, Mr. Speaker. I didn't think I would hear the president of Mexico refer to our president, Joe Biden, as the migrant president. And I did not think it would only take two months to create the worst border crisis in the history of America. But unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, that's exactly what happened. When I visited the border on Monday, one thing was abundantly clear. This crisis, Mr. Speaker, started on midnight January 20th. It started when President Biden stopped building the wall, even though there are only a few miles left to complete. And when he made that decision, he had to even pay more money to the contractors to break the contract. And when he promised to make all 11 million illegal immigrants citizens. Now my colleague, Mr. Jimenez of Florida spoke with a family from Honduras about their journey to the border. He asked them how long the trek was. 22 days, they said. The story of this family is a story we've heard from many, and it's not unique. As you see, thousands decided to cross the border now because of President Biden's promises and policies. They listened to him in June when he said, you need to surge the border. As one migrant family recently told Fox News, yes, I listened to the news that they were letting people in. 
When I was there Monday, I was speaking to the border agents, the American citizens, and the migrants. The number one thing was clear. The crisis at the border is the worst they have ever seen. You see, when we went to El Paso, we toured the new processing facility. We built it under the last administration. It's huge, 98,000 square feet. And when I asked the chief of the border and customs, Chief Chavez said, we built it so large with capacity, we didn't believe it could ever meet capacity. But that day, that day we marked history. That day they hit capacity. 1,040 people, most children unaccompanied. You know what it meant when you hit capacity? That meant 120 border agents got pulled off the border to protect us to go into the center. That's what a crisis looks like, even if the administration won't say it. We also saw overworked Border Patrol agents in the El Paso facility. I do, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank them. What they're being asked to do is extraordinary. The pressure on them. The pressure from the administration not to allow press to see what's happening. The pressure of overcapacitated of the number of people there. The pressure to do it under a pandemic. That's what a crisis looks like. When we sat and talked to the doctor, the medical unit, he told us it's approximately 10% of every immigrant has COVID. But they're not tested. You see, that's only for American citizens when they re-enter. But they're not tested and they're sent to other cities. And as many as there's no here, you could be tested and you're positive, but the person you've been standing around put into one unit with for a number of days, sleeping very close next to, have to interact the entire time in one unit, closed unit, that you'll come positive in the next five days. But that's okay because you'll be shipped to another city. But that city has been trying to combat this pandemic. Who knows what happens next? And more alarming, the most alarming, Mr. Speaker, was when we were briefed in Monument 3 in El Paso. They told us that they've caught people on the terrorist watch list. I know, Mr. Speaker, you would be concerned about that. I was alarmed. I questioned further. It's not just people on the terrorist watch list. We found people from other nations, from Iran, from Turkey. But Mr. Speaker, when I went to the press conference right after that, I mentioned that, because I think every American, one terrorist is too much in this nation that could get through. I believe, Mr. Speaker, you believe that too. But Congressman Gallego, the chairman of the Subcommittee of Intelligence and Special Operations, and Mr. Speaker, he, he, he also represents a border state. I thought he would tweet arm in arm to stop this. But you know what he said, Mr. Speaker? He tweeted on Monday that I was either lying or I was wrong because he hadn't heard anything about it. I believe he even challenged because he had such high clearance because he's on intel. And Congresswoman Escobar, she represents part of El Paso. I thought she would be very concerned too because this is where they're entering, where they cut these people on a terrorist watch list. Not everybody gets put on one. Mr. Speaker, what she said was, I was trying to fuel the division. Fuel the division. Because I just told something that a terrorist was caught coming through. But on Tuesday, Axios confirmed four people matching terrorist watch list arrested at the border. Three from Yemen, Mr. Speaker, and one from Serbia. Biden's DHS secretary also confirmed that this indeed happened. I'm not sure if their Twitter account is down or if they've been blocked, but I have not heard an apology or a correction. I, I know Twitter does that to members of Congress, but I hope they're back on and I will soon get the apology or the acknowledgement of a correction and the respect. If members with security clearance haven't heard about the terrorist threats on the border, I suggest they pay closer attention to the classified briefings. 
Mr. Speaker, the responsibility for this crisis rests squarely on the shoulders of President Biden. After weeks of claiming they could handle it, his administration is now attempting to blame the growing crisis on the previous president. But nothing could be further from the truth. Words and actions have meanings, and Biden has sent the message that our border is open. So there is no question that President Biden provoked the problem. The question is, how can we stop it? Mr. Speaker, when I was there in El Paso, 150 miles of the wall was supposed to be built. At that midnight on January 20th, 133 miles had been finished. Instead of finishing the project, they stopped. You could go to the ranch where they took down the old barrier because they were going to put the new wall. There is nothing there. It's not just people coming across illegally. Animals move back and forth. So far, the Biden administration and congressional Democrats aren't providing any solutions. Mr. Speaker, we want to solve this problem. That's why I sent a letter to the president two weeks ago to sit down. When the president said we should surge, immigrants should surge to the border, we understood what he meant. So all those that were seeking asylum automatically got in. COVID or not, no test required. We saw that the Biden administration, which told migrants, we aren't staying, we aren't saying don't come, just don't come now. You see, that was from the secretary. Those are really strong words. But Mr. Speaker, what moved me the most was speaking to a border agent. He was a father, spoke to one that was a mother, talking about the unaccompanied children, told me a story of walking upon a child who was one-year-old, three-year-old, and five-year-old, all holding hands. No one in sight for miles away. No one in sight for miles away. It's remarkable that they got there. But the question was, how many didn't make it? How many didn't make it? How many lives have been lost or abused? Simply because they heard a message or you stop the PACER program, or you change from remain in Mexico, or you stop finishing the wall that was almost complete. Mr. Speaker, those who defend the border told me that they've never seen so much fentanyl as they had in the last month. They've never seen the tactics that were used of storming the wall all at once. Just in this one small section, if you looked, it would just go a number of blocks one to 200 people a night are apprehended. We saw that last week with the Democrats' so-called COVID relief bill, 22 billion in health care subsidies that illegal immigrants are eligible for. Another clear message, but zero dollars are dedicated to helping the men and women patrolling the border. And Mr. Speaker, they need the help. They're stretched so thin. They're stretched so thin in the middle of COVID where they deal with something where they're not even testing for COVID, but they have to interact. This new facility, 98,000 square feet. It is a beautiful facility. New. Already met capacity for the first time in history with the new administration. But if you looked across into the parking lot, the dirt parking lot, where the border agents have to park, they were moving their cars, you see. They had to put up tents because the surge is so great. You see, they listen to the words of candidate Biden and they watch the actions of President Biden. But there's no new money. I know that COVID bill was the large, well, we don't, shouldn't call it COVID, it's less than 9% for it. But Mr. President, I mean, Mr. Speaker, do you realize in that bill, prisoners will get more money than the Border Patrol? Do you realize that they're gonna have to use their own operation money, the stretch so thin. So not only can the, member, could the Border Patrol not be on the border, now they're taking any money for the future to deal with the surge today. The American people deserve leaders who will work with the seriousness of purpose, what this crisis requires. That is why I wrote a letter to President Biden two weeks ago asking to meet about the crisis. Since then, the crisis has only gotten worse, but unfortunately the President 
still hasn't responded. So today I sent President Biden a second letter offering to relay what we learned at the border since he refuses to go there. But I believe it would benefit from a hearing of what we saw and heard. Mr. Speaker, if the president won't go there and the president puts orders to deny the press from learning so the American people can't know, I think it would be behoove him to hear from the people who are there. I also introduced five solutions based on the information from our trip. All of them are rooted in the basic idea that we are both a nation of immigrants and a nation of laws. Mr. Speaker, I know you're proud of your heritage and I'm proud of mine like every single American. I know how many of us come from immigrant families. I know when you walk into my office, which you have been, Mr. Speaker, you will look on my wall. You will see the documents of Ellis Island. April 23rd of this year will mark the 100th anniversary of my grandfather, Guido Palladino, coming from Italy. As a young child, boarding a ship to come here for a better life. You see, America believes in immigration. But there is no time to break the law and come illegally. There is a process to come here. If we implement now, these common sense solutions would help to stop the border crisis. Mr. Speaker, as I said early, the Biden border crisis is a humanitarian health and national security crisis, and it's deteriorating quickly. To protect our citizens from further harm, our government must send a clear and united message to the citizens of Mexico and Central America. That message is simple. There is never a right time to break the law and enter the United States illegally. The time for delay, denial, and distraction is over. Mr. Speaker, I know you care about this issue. I know you care about what's happening at the border. Mr. Speaker, I ask you, convey that to the President. If he cares as much as you, he would travel there. I know it's tough to travel, but when you have Air Force One, and I know he's got a schedule, it's not far to fly to the border. His own secretary has said this is the worst it's been in 20 years. Mr. Speaker, there's not one law that has passed here that created that crisis. Mr. Speaker, as to all your constituents and all those in America, there's been terrorists who have caught. There are children walking in the desert by themselves. There are cartels making a fortune off the parts and disadvantaging of America. We're in the middle of a pandemic where people are not being tested but shipped to other cities. This isn't political, Mr. President, Mr. Speaker. This is about this nation. Join with us on our letter. Let's solve this problem together. And I yield back, Mr. Speaker. We are here today, my colleagues, to talk about our dreamers, the precious resource that we have in our country. But of course, unfortunately, what we are hearing is as much fear-mongering as possible by our Republican colleagues about immigrants. Mr. Speaker, I would just point out, I was at the border two years ago, the Rio Grande sector. Mr. Roy was at the border last week. Mr. McCarthy was at the border this week. There, the, 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 the previous spe speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker, said that you know, Republicans didn't come when she didn't. We've all been down there and seen, the, seen what goes on. And just this week, we've been down there to see the current crisis. We take up this bill at a time when three times as many people are crossing the border, almost three times as many are crossing the border as were this time last year. Under Obama, under President Obama, it was a bad day if you had 1,000 contacts at the border. Now we're having 3,000 a day. These bills are being introduced advertising that people who come here legally are suckers, and we're going to give preference to people who didn't come here legally. I would further like to ask we delay the vote as until the Biden administration removes the muzzling of the Border Patrol. We do not really know what's going on at the border when this most opaque of administrations tells the Border Patrol that they cannot tell press or congressmen what's going on. James Madison must be spinning in his grave. He gave the press freedom and they refused to use it. I yield.
Mr. Speaker, dreamers are American citizens in every sense of the word. For most, America is the only home they've ever known. Despite what my colleagues on the other side of the aisle argue, dreamers are not a drain on the economy. The crisis at the border is astounding in its scale as thousands of illegal immigrants, enabled by drug cartels and human traffickers, enter the country on a daily basis, many of them unaccompanied minors, untested for COVID-19. And yet our colleagues across the aisle accuse us of using this crisis at the border as an excuse. Context matters, and policies have consequences. This is a surge at levels we have never seen before, and it's a direct reaction to the Biden administration dispensing with numerous measures which protected our southern border. Yet it's another day of political theater today on the House floor and another set of bills without any real debate. In addition to the lackluster effort here in Congress, our president needs to enforce our laws. I and 20 of my colleagues from Texas recently urged the Texas Attorney General to hold the President's feet to the fire and enforce the laws, such as Title 42. The President can use whatever language he wants to describe what's happening on our southern border, but his reckless policies are creating a disastrous situation for Texans, putting our health and safety in grave jeopardy. Today could have been an opportunity for real debate and to send a message that this manufactured crisis needs to stop and make true reforms to our immigration system, yet that could not be further from the truth. It's obvious we have a broken immigration system, but Democrats' flagrant disregard of laws to appease the far left is dangerous and out of touch with the challenges real Americans are facing right now. Ignoring laws such as Title 42, denying a border crisis, that's not leadership. And Texans know better than to take that sitting down. I urge Gentlemen, my colleagues to vote no on this bill, and I yield back. My parents came to this country 40 years ago as refugees, and because of the incredible freedoms and opportunities that our wonderful country has to offer, we've been able to live the American dream. Across the United States, young people who live in fear, young people who have known no other country but the United States as their home. That's what this bill is about. The American people are generous people, instinctively drawn to the idea of amnesty. It's a fine word, amnesty. A general pardon for offenses, an act of forgiveness for past offenses. Of course, in the immigration arena, amnesty means not only pardon or forgiveness for violating our law, but also a grant of important rights, ultimately the privilege of citizenship. Sometimes that important distinction can be overlooked, but what is particularly despicable in the present legislation is that Democrats exploit that fundamental spirit of generosity by misleading the American people about the scope of the proposed amnesty, its recipients, and its implications. They would have you believe that this legislation responds to those President Obama dubbed dreamers. In the gentlewoman from California's description, it is a 17-year-old who worked hard, became a model student, quarterback on the high school football team, who doesn't even remember the time before he lived in the United States. But this bill is not the DREAM Act. Rather, it crushes the dreams of American workers. It's not for only 641,000 active DACA recipients. In this bill, Democrats want to provide amnesty for more than 2.9 million illegal immigrants, including even people who entered the United States illegally by January 1st, 2021, just over two months ago and all at a time when our employment, unemployment rate is over 6% and the working Americans are hardest pressed by this economic impacts of Democrats' affinity for lockdowns. This bill also allows dangerous criminals and gang members to gain amnesty benefits, even if they've been convicted of multiple misdemeanors. If this bill is signed into law, adults from Syria, Yemen, Sudan, Somalia, Liberia, and Venezuela will receive amnesty. We know this body should be prioritizing re relief for American citizens, not illegal immigrants. I urge my colleagues to reject this time's expired. misleading rhetoric and this dangerous bill. Well done. The FBI, the Secretary of Homeland Security, said the greatest threat to America is domestic terrorism, white racism, white supremacy, not babies who have come here innocently and through no fault of their own. One of the greatest problems facing this country was a lack of, of workers.
that our birth rate was declining and that we need more people to come to this country and more workers to supply our workforce and our economy. Those situations have not gotten better. These dreamers are trained in America. Madam Speaker, I rise in support of H.R. 6, the American Dream and Promise Act. Dreamers have been waiting far too long for meaningful congressional action. As a first-generation American, I know firsthand the opportunities that America provides. I understand why every person on this planet should want to come to this beautiful country. We are a land of immigrants, built on hard work and blessed by freedoms that are protected by law and order and secured by our Constitution. I sympathize with the Dreamers, I really do. But this bill should not be considered before addressing our broken immigration system that led to this very problem. Providing amnesty to dreamers while ignoring the crisis at the border is like cleaning up spilled water before, the, before fixing the broken pipe. If Congress fails to reform our immigration system and fails to secure our borders, future migrants will be subjected to the same situation in which dreamers today find themselves. We need to fix our broken immigration system and secure our borders. And if my colleagues are sincere about their care and passion for the dreamers, they should work with us to secure the border today so that the dreamers have a chance tomorrow. I yield back. Madam Speaker, I now yield one minute to the distinguished speaker of the House. The distinguished speaker is recognized for one minute. Three years ago, I came to the floor and I spoke about our dreamers for eight hours and six minutes. Have no fear, I will not use my the speaker's minute to that extent today. But I wish I could because I have so much to say. The godmother of this legislation who carries forth a commitment to our newcomers to our country Chairwoman Nidia Velasquez, who at the time was the chair of the Hispanic Caucus. Uh, of African American and Korean descent speak in terms of what this means to Asian Pacific American community. When they come here with their hopes and dreams and aspirations, these fat parents bringing their children, their hopes and dreams and aspirations. Indeed, they are true and legitimate heirs, these dreamers are, of our founders. E pluribus unum from many one. We talk about that all the time. I was reading letters that my members were handing me the story of the dreamers. Of, of uh, some of our members from Arizona, that would be uh, Ed Roy, uh, excuse me, uh, Congressman Pastor, Mr. Chairman Pastor. We often talk about dreamers having the support of the three Bs, badges in terms of law enforcement, Bible in terms of faith-based, and the business community. Zoe Lofgren is also the chair of the House Administration Committee, so I call her Madam Chairman, Madam Chairman. She has, uh, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, she has uh, uh, taught immigration law Nearly three quarters of the public support a path to citizenship. I always love to quote President Reagan. Our leadership in the world would soon be lost. With that, I urge a bipartisan vote and yield back the balance of my time. 
I swear, sometimes I stand in this chamber and I feel like I'm in the twilight zone listening to a number of my Republican colleagues espouse white supremacist ideology to demigrate our dreamers, our wonderful dreamers. Madam Speaker, I'll tell you what this bill does. Page 51, Section 3, uh, 310, grant program to assist applicants. The Secretary shall establish within U.S. Citizen and Immigration Service a program to award grants. So while there's a disaster on the border, so much so that we have to send FEMA there, this bill not only gives amnesty to illegals, it uses American tax dollars to help the illegals apply for amnesty. Such a deal for the American taxpayer. Such a deal for the American taxpayer. That's what this legislation does. That's what this bill's about. At a time when we've got chaos on the border, this bill gives amnesty to three million illegals and uses American tax dollars to help those same illegals apply for the amnesty. I mean, the disrespect that the Democrats have for the American taxpayer, it's, it's astounding to me. It is, it is truly astounding. I find the name, the Dream and Promise Act, quite a nightmare. Because while this may be a bill that will help some, it, dis it destroys the dreams of the American children. And the contradictory and the hypocrisy in this entire bill can be summed up in this way. I've heard over and over, Ms. Madam Speaker, these dreamers are our frontline workers. They've been in harm way, harm's way. They've helped with this uh, pandemic. And yet, we're going to open the border and allow people into our country that do not have a COVID test. We are putting our dreamers in harm's way. I find the hypocrisy of this bill somewhat puzzling. But I also want to point out that this bill allows those convicted of dangerous crimes, including MS-13 and other gang members, to receive a green card by including the following exceptions if the applicants with multiple misdemeanors and convictions, even if the crime was violent or resulted in death or bodily injury, they can still get a green card. It will not take into account violent crimes committed as a juvenile when adjudicating for the application. So I would time's strongly expired. urge a no on this. Thank you. I yield back. I rise in strong support of the Dream and Promise Act. But before I continue with my remarks, I want to remind Mr. Jordan and the others across the aisle that no human being is illegal. Let me just bring back to the, the issue at hand, which is our dreamers. Dreamers are taxpayers. They obey the law. They work. They go to school. They're firefighter, firefighters. Madam Speaker, I rise today to oppose H.R. 6. Under the leadership of President Trump, illegal border crossings dropped dramatically and our border was secured. Since taking office, President Biden has halted construction of our border security, attempted a moratorium on deportations, and in so doing created significant incentives for illegal immigration. In February, over 100,000 illegal immigrants were apprehended at our southern border, three times the amount from the same month the year previous. Speaking to Border Patrol agents, Republicans and Democrats are told the same thing. This is a humanitarian crisis. Violent cartels are taking advantage of innocent people to smuggle drugs into our country. Yet the Biden administration places a gag order, a gag order, Madam Speaker, on CBP agents. What is going on here? Are we going to face the problem or are we going to hide it with gag orders? Now Democrats are introducing H.R. 6, which only exasperates the Biden policies at the border by creating the incentive of amnesty with no discussion of border security. Madam Speaker, it is time for the House to wake up. This disastrous policy is in full view. There is no hiding from it. We should oppose H.R. 6 on humanitarian grounds. I rise today in strong support of H.R. 6, the Dream and Promise Act, to put Dreamers, TPS, and DED immigrants on a path to citizenship. These are our friends, neighbors, and colleagues. They've graduated from our schools, served in our military, and work in our communities. I rise today in support of the bill that is near and dear to my heart, H.R. 6, the Dream and Promise Act. As the proud daughter of Jamaican immigrants, I understand the need for the Dream and Promise Act, and more importantly, we need a humane and dignified 21st century immigration system. Comprehensive immigration reform is what is required. Because let me be very clear, crystal clear, our immigration system is broken. Thank you, Madam Chair. I rise today in opposition of this bill because we have a crisis along our southern border. 
We have record number of migrants seeking to come into our country. The number of unaccompanied children illegally crossing the border increased 63% last month. This is truly a humanitarian and security crisis, but the current administration is not adequately addressing it. In fact, they're not addressing it at all. Instead of doing more to protect our border, the administration is rolling back policies that discourage this kind of mass migration. Today, we're considering a bill that does nothing, nothing to solve the problem. In fact, it shows that there are no repercussions for breaking our laws and encourages more to attempt to enter the country illegally. We need a comprehensive, comprehensive and bipartisan solution to this crisis that discourages entering illegally and rewards following the law. Thank you, and I yield back. I rise on behalf of those who teach, who heal, who protect, who study, and for those whose entrepreneurial talent advances our economy for all of our dreamers. Bringing an amnesty bill to the floor this week in the middle of a complete and total crisis on our southern border is not only tone deaf, but it is wrong. I traveled to the border on Monday and surveyed the facilities and the border and the environment. It's a mess. Thousands of people are coming across our borders illegally. If we really cared about children, we would be looking at the policies that are incentivizing the drug cartels, the traffickers, the coyotes that are bringing them across, exploiting them in every way. It's heartbreaking. Some wish our nation harm, including the individuals that have been found out to be on the terror watch list who have been apprehended crossing the border. This bill will only incentivize more illegal crossings. What a week to put this bill to vote. We cannot begin to address the issues we are facing when our border is broken. I implore my colleagues on the other side of the aisle to work with us in a bipartisan manner to secure the border and then move on. With that, I yield back. Dreamers and individuals eligible for TPS or deferred enforcement departure contribute mightily to their communities and to our economy. They deserve a pathway to citizenship. And the speaker, I now yield 30 seconds to the distinguished gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green. Gentlemen's recognized for 30 seconds. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, my constituent, Mr. Jose Escobar, was living his American dream. Dreamers are teachers, students, and healthcare workers. They feed us, care for us, and inspire us. They strengthen our economy. Now is the moment. We must give them the same opportunities that, and protections that they deserve as Americans. Madam Speaker, when I speak to families back home, they understand that there are individuals and children in this country who were brought here through no fault of their own. They are understanding and compassionate people who want a solution that is fair and just. But something that I also hear from these same families is there's concern and fear for providing green cards and paths to citizenship to gang members and criminals. The text of this bill only compounds those fears preventing the United States government from using readily available information to remove gang members who are national security threats and other public safety threats. This motion to recommit ensures that those individuals who ap whose applications would be denied on the basis of criminal grounds, national security grounds, public safety risks, or as a gang members are considered by the Department of Homeland Security for removal from the United States. Under H.R. 6, information provided in an application for a green card may not be used for the purposes of immigration enforcement, even if DHS denies the application or it's withdrawn. This means that if an applicant has a murder conviction, a rape conviction, or if the applicant is a gang member and DHS knows about it because of the application, DHS can't even refer that person for removal. To be clear, this MTR does not direct DHS to remove an applicant if they are denied on any other basis. Only applicants who are denied on criminal or national security grounds as public safety risks or as gang members would be affected. As, crimes, as crime rates skyrocket in cities across the country, the American people are asking for serious solutions. They are crying out for help. 
and this bill only further enables murderers, rapists, and gang members to exploit our system. If the Democrats see fit to listen to the American people and exclude these criminals and gang members from receiving greed cards under H.R. 6, then they should vote for this motion to recommit to ensure those dangerous individuals are denied a safe haven here in our neighborhoods and communities where our children go to school and play. I rise in support of H.R. 6, the American Dream and Promise Act. How hypocritical and shameful of the other side of the aisle. They want to deny dreamers, yet those dreamers provide education and daycare services for their children. They want to deny dreamers, but those dreamers take care of their failing elderly parents. They want to deny dreamers, but they pick, their parents pick the crops and the fruits that you eat at your table. How hypocritical, Madam Speaker. They want to deny dreamers, yet those dreamers, as members of the National Guard, protected us right here against an angry racist mob. I know that too well, Madam Speaker, because I came to this nation without no papers. And I sit as a member of Congress, and my vote is equal to any of your votes. It's equal to any of your votes because this country, you can dream, and it has promise. We will not go back, Madam Speaker. We will continue to pull forward, move forward. I support H.R. 6, and I yield back. I, along with 47 members, work to eliminate those racially motivated barriers to legalization from this bill. These harmful provisions will deny immigrant youth a better future. In this moment of racial reckoning... Madam Speaker, don't ask the president. Ask the people of Texas, and they'll tell you the truth. Biden's unilateral actions are the cause for this unprecedented crisis. My Democrat colleagues' response to their fellow Americans, an amnesty bill that will only add fuel to the fire of the burning chaos at the southern border. Madam Speaker, how did we go from America first to America last in just days? Taken together, these perverse incentives will further encourage lawlessness, enrich cartels, enable the abuse and exploitation of the most vulnerable people, cheat those who have respected our process, compromise the health and safety of the American people, and undermine the sovereignty and security of our great nation. Don't ask the president, Madam Speaker. Ask the people of Texas, and they'll tell you the truth. The cartels are in control at the border, and the left is in control of the Democrat Party. I yield back. H.R. 6 is a critical step toward citizenship for DREAMers, TPS, and DED holders. However, the criminal bar provisions added to this bill further entangles our racist criminal legal system in the citizenship process. Madam Speaker, I rise today because I am absolutely furious. Every single day, 5,000 new illegal aliens cross our southern border. Every single day, more men, more women and children are smuggled across our border and being trafficked. Every single day, the drug cartels and human traffickers are raping and abusing our women and children. One out of three of these women and children are being raped. I ask the, the, the administration this, how is that not a crisis? For almost two months, our nation has refused to call this a crisis. What is occurring at our border? You cannot solve a problem unless you first admit there is a problem. And we have a problem. This bill today does nothing to solve that problem or even acknowledge that we have a problem. We as a Congress need to say in unison, we have a crisis at our border. Time to expire. The American Dream and Promise Act will bring much needed relief to our dreamers and our immigrant communities, and I will be voting for the bill. However, many of my constituents are disappointed that H.R. 6 includes harsh exclusions that will block many of our long-term members of our community from citizenship simply because of misdeeds, mistakes that they made years and years ago. I will continue to advocate for, their, for, for them, and I yield back. Gentleman from Ohio. Uh, Madam Speaker, if we adopt the motion to recommit, we will instruct the committee on the judiciary to consider the amendment to H.R. 6 to ensure that gang members do not receive any benefits under the underlying bill and are swiftly removed from the country. I ask unanimous consent to insert the text of the amendment in the record immediately prior to the vote on the motion to recommit. Without objection. 
and we reserve. Gentleman reserves. I and the Congressional Hispanic Caucus rise in support of H.R. 6, the Dream and Promise Act, which will make an incredible positive difference for our nation. I want to thank Congressional. Two seconds. Time's two seconds. Two seconds. Two seconds, Jerry. I yield 15 seconds. Gen Gentlemen's recognized. I want to thank. Uh, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus members, Congresswoman Lucille Royball Allard, Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez, as well as Congresswoman Yvette Clark for their remarkable efforts on this piece of legislation. Thank you, and I yield back. There's an unprecedented crisis at the southern border. Literally hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants are crossing into the United States, stretching our uh, patrol officers and enforcement down there to the breaking point. In February of this year, over 100,000 illegals were apprehended. Uh, that's a 28% increase from the year before. Uh, and I guarantee it's only going to get worse. The projections are even more than that uh, this coming month. The illegal border crossings are now five times higher than before President Biden was inaugurated. And this is all fueled by the open border policies of this administration. Uh, it, promising amnesty, ending the wall construction, halting deportations, handcuffing our law enforcement, and undermining border security. Uh, President Trump gave President Biden a secure southern border, and in less than three months, it has been dismantled. This is absolute insanity. Meanwhile, here in Washington, the Democratic majority is cheerfully Gentlemen's time has expired. You know the gentleman additional 30 seconds. Gentlemen's recognized. Thank you. The Democratic Party is cheerfully pushing more legislation uh, to incentivize more illegals coming here. We have these bills it, pr pr uh, promoting amnesty. Uh, we are literally exalting illegals in this country over those who have waited years to become citizens. This is not rocket science. The Democratic Party knows this is going to create a greater crisis, and they simply don't care. It's time to stop fueling the crisis and start solving it. With that, I urge my colleagues to vote no, and I yield back. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in favor of dreamers who call the U.S. home. Dreamers are our neighbors, our colleagues, our classmates. They're individuals that serve as essential workers, teachers, medical personnel that fully contribute to our country and make America stronger. They pay taxes. They work, they have no criminal record, they help us, and those are the type of individuals that we need. My question is, why are we afraid of a seven-year-old? With that, I yield back the balance of my time. I rise today as the granddaughter of immigrants in support of the American Dream and Promise Act. A hundred years ago, my father was born in a small medieval village in the mountaintops of southern Italy. Ready to close. Gentleman from Ohio. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would yield the balance of our time, which I believe is two minutes, to the, to the distinguished whip, the gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Scalise. The gentleman's recognized. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank the gentleman from Ohio for yielding. I rise in strong opposition to this amnesty bill. And if you look at what's happening at our southern border right now, America's facing a serious crisis. Our southern border is being overrun. The facilities, the detention centers that are set up to hold people who are coming, coming across are being overwhelmed. In fact, if you listen to what the border agents are telling us, it's total mayhem, to quote one of the border agents. Many facilities are not at 100 percent or 200 percent or 300 percent capacity, but even worse than that. There are kids that aren't getting enough food, that aren't being able to shower more than once a week. This is going on in American detention facilities today, and President Biden refuses to acknowledge the problem. Part of dealing with the problem is to first admit there's a problem, and President Biden doesn't even want to acknowledge it. And then on the heels of this border crisis that is going on right now, there's a bill on the House floor to create amnesty, to create a bigger magnet saying, come to the southern border. The Homeland Security Secretary has been pressed repeatedly the last few days to tell people to stop coming across the border illegally, and he won't do it. He says, well, don't come right now, as if there's a time to break the law. 
Let's get back to legal immigration, a system that actually works for America. But when you have a crisis at the border, the last thing you should do is make it worse. That's what this bill does. We should be having an honest conversation about how to make our legal system of immigration work, not how to ignite a crisis at the border and make it worse. We know how bad it is over there. In fact, because of the encouragement to cross the border illegally, there are caravans of young kids coming across, reports that up to a third of all the women coming across are being sexually assaulted on the journey. Stop this humanitarian crisis, reject this bill, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman from New York. Madam Speaker, we do have a crisis in this country. The crisis consists of a shortage of workers as our, popula as our um, 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 birth rate goes down, as our aging goes up, we have fewer and fewer workers. And since economists tell us that the number of workers is what produces prosperity, this is a crisis for the country. Fortuitously, we have a situation where we have several million people in this country who are Americans, who were born, who have raised, lived almost their entire lives in America, who, as was mentioned before, find out they weren't born in this country only when they apply for a driver's license when they're 18 years old. They are a resource for this country, and they ought to be legalized, which is what this bill does, so that we can utilize their talents properly and, and remain in a rule of law. Madam Speaker, organizations, associations, and industry leaders from across the political spectrum support passage of H.R. 6, the American Dream and Promise Act of 2021. They include among them United We Dream, Service Employees International Union, AFL-CIO, and these unions do not fear competition. They know it is good. The U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, United States Chamber of Commerce, Apple, and the National Education Association. After closing the books on four years of disastrous and inhumane immigration policies, Today we begin a new chapter, one based on compassion, reason, and the fundamental values we hold dear as Americans. Passage of H.R. 6 is long overdue. Today's vote will dictate the future of millions of dreamers and recipients of TPS and DED and will greatly help the economy of this country. I urge my colleagues to vote in support of the Dream and Promise Act of 2021, and I yield back the balance of my time.